Hi, welcome. My name is Savannah and this is the So Livy Dies Yarn podcast. Um, I appreciate you stopping by. If you're new, welcome. If you're returning, you're awesome. <laughs> and if you'd like to be notified when I post a new video, which is usually once a week, go ahead and subscribe. That way, you know, you you see <laughs> when I post a video. Um, if you don't want to subscribe, that's that's not a problem either, but it's an option. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about everything that I've worked on this week. Um, mostly knitting. I have one sewing project. Well, one and a half, I guess you could say. And I tried a new craft this week, so... Something I didn't need to do, but I had the desire. So, you know, collect all the hobbies, right? <laughs> so let's go ahead and just dive right in. And then at the end, I will talk about life stuff. So we're going to go ahead and dive right in. I have three whips and two new starts. You know, let's go ahead and dive right in. It is June 9th, 2023 at... 12 16 in the afternoon we just got home from the pool and i'm so grateful that we choose the 10 a.m slot because um as soon as we got home the wind picked up the sun went away it's super there's a super st there's a a really big storm cloud above uh the neighborhood now and um it is trying to sprinkle so okay <laughs> that wasn't necessary but that's how my brain works right let's dive right in I'm going to go ahead and show you. Um, there's not a lot of progress on two of these whips at all, but I figured I'd still show them, especially if you're new here. Um, then you can see what I have on my needles. Uh, this first one right here is the Farnham sweater by uh, the Knit Pearl Girl. I am knitting this using Holstgarn Super Soft. This is the Ecru color, and then the stripes are the Prussian colorway. Um, I'm holding two strands double for each to get the recommended gauge. And this is, I mean, I have the whole body done and the neck done, which I showed the last time, but I actually picked up one of the sleeves and did just that much. Sorry, I know it's trying to focus on me. Barely anything, but I wanted to get it picked up and established so that if for any reason I I need something to knit on, this isn't mindless because there is decreases, but it shouldn't be too bad. So at least I have something. I mean, I'd like to get this done. It's been on my needles for, for a while now. Um, but yeah, the Farnham sweater by Knit Pro Girl. See, I told you, not much. It's in this bag. I got this little drawstring tote bag from the Target, uh, it's what, the Bullseye Playground. I call it the ta the Target Dollar Spot. <laughs> I got this one, and I have a different one, too. I really love it. It's a, it's a drawstring. I don't know if they still have these, unfortunately. I wonder if they'd have them on the website. I, I don't know. But, see... These things are awesome and they're made from canvas and it's a round bottom it's really nice the design is these little these little dots i don't know i am so grateful that i was able to find the second one so i got the first one first really loved it and then i was really bummed that i couldn't find that i didn't grab the second one and then one day they happen to have them again so i was like heck yeah i'm getting it love these things okay next whip this is a really old whip i'm unsure when i started this but i needed the needles off of this whip to go for the farnham sweater i eventually just ended up switching the needles between the two because i had the i had the three inch needles on this one and then the i had like what four four or five inch needles on this one but i needed a us six four millimeter for both of these projects so when I picked this one up, I decided to work on it a little bit, and then um, and then I eventually just switched the needles. But one night, if this got one night, this is, if you're unfamiliar, this is the from the Forbidden Fiber Co's Gamer Box that she released last year. 
it was like a mystery gamer box. This is the bag that came in it with this little uh, cute zipper pull. Um, and then all the yarn and the pattern came in the box as well, plus the stitch markers that I'm using for this. A couple of other things came in the box, but um, I'm not using them. One of them was a, it is a, what is it called? hand sanitizer holder and it has like a little uh bottle of potion uh embroidered on it i got a air freshener that looked like pac-man and then some final fantasy coasters but i never played final fantasy so that wasn't for me i didn't know anything about that but the pattern and the yarn um were very uh uh legend of zelda-esque themed and so that is all my jam so the pattern that came with the box i don't know if this is available yet if it is available for purchase um i will link it below but every time i check this pattern is not available um because it was specific or specifically specifically for the box but it's the um lost wood shawl by justine chanel I don't know if you can see that. I'm trying to... Okay. And then the yarn that came in the box is for this. So let's see here. I don't know. Remember. Let's see. I wrote down the colorways on the pattern so that I could tell you which is which. These are all Forbidden Fiber Co. Genesis. Um, let me tag. They're for Vinback Fiber Coat Genesis Superwash Merino. It's 100% wool. They're 50 gram balls. Um, right there. Oop. Oh, goodness. I know it was trying to focus for a second. Okay, so the gray is anti hero, the green is subplot, and the orange is sidekick. So these are three of the colors. And then there was two hand dyed colors. There was this one. Oh, come on. And then there's this one as well. So this one is, I believe, Link. Shoot. I'm sorry, I'm not prepared at all. Where is the... Didn't write it down. I think this one's Link, the brown one, and this one is Zelda. I think the tag fell off. That's what I was trying not to do. All right, so this is Zelda. This tag needs to stay on here. And these are Gluttony Sock Minis. They're 80% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, and 40 grams, not 20 grams. Oh. So yeah, these, I haven't needed this one yet. I think it's at the end of the shawl. Now let me show you what I've actually done so far. Oh no, that's falling apart. Ugh, I might have to re-cake this. I might just re-cake all of them. It'll make it easier. So this is what I've got so far. Um, it definitely needs a really good block. So it's just a lot of different motifs. Like you have, you start out with a bunch of garter, garter, and then some slip stitching, more garter, and then you have this bit, which I'm about to repeat. That's probably why I put it down, because I was like, oh, it's going to take too much brain power. And then you got fisherman's rib, and then there was these pearl triangles, more fisherman's rib, and then the garter, like, divider, and then, like I said, it goes back into this again. So, yeah, and the stitch markers are also from the box. They're, they're game themed. So you got a heart and a mushroom. I think there was a potion bottle. Oh, well, a bottle with some, uh, what do you want to call it? There's glitter in there. So, yeah, I worked on that for one evening. Just got the fisherman's rib section finished. Um, oops, this is not supposed to go in there. This is for a different project. <sighs> this 
so yeah, it's just a really slow going project. Um, colors aren't necessarily doing it for me. Um, but the fact that it's a, like, a, to me, it is a Zelda themed uh, pattern. I'm going to do it. <laughs> so yeah. And then the other whip that I have that I, this one I've been working on a lot. So there's a decent amount of progress. It's actually starting to not fit in my, my bag. This one is from Yarn Harbor. I'm sorry. Yarn Harbor. It's the bag is by Front Range or oh, nope, it's Front River, Frost River. It's Frost River. The bag is actually made in Duluth and then the Yarn Club or the Yarn Harbor is a Duluth yarn store. So they kind of collab to make this really pretty bag. Um, it's like a wax canvas little bag. I like it. But I had um, a t-shirt in here and I actually had to cake up new yarn last night for this project. So I'm glad that I'm able to move on with my stash there. So yeah, this is what I'm working on. And it's still on a tiny little needle. So this is where I was the last time. And I've done quite a bit. Sorry. So this is the Shore Tea by Ann Venzel. Um, I'm just working on the body. I have, I still have a ways to go, I believe. I can't remember exactly how many inches I need to do, but I have a bit. It's a four row repeat. So I'm actually just using, instead of pulling up the pattern and then tallying all the time, I am using my what is this? It's like a little row counter that I have. Um, and I'm just doing, you know, one, two, three, four, and then repeating again. So that way I can come back to it and be like, okay, I'm on row three. And that means I'm doing a, a knit row. And then, you know, the other, like two and four, are like the yarn overs and stuff like that. So it's been really helpful. So I've been getting a lot of progress done on this. I'm knitting this one on a US 4, which is two needles higher than what it's called for, but it's still quite, I mean, I definitely must be a tight knitter because the gauge is still pretty tight. Um, I'm not looking forward to picking up the sleeves, but you know, it'll be engaging. So that is helpful. The yarn that I'm using is Oh, crapola. Not just yarn barfed. I have, this is Pearl Soho's Linen Quill in the Bird's Egg Blue colorway. And then this one is Knit Picks Shadow Lace in the Cobweb colorway. So I'm holding these two double and I'm getting this. Yeah. I don't know what else to tell you about this thing. I all, I guess I will say that I did put markers in between each repeat just because I was tired of, <laughs> I was tired of counting in between each one and sometimes I'd go past and then I'd have to tink back. And I was just like, you know what, let's just make it easy. We'll put all these little stitch markers in, in, in between each repeat and then I'll know what the heck I'm doing. So yeah, again, this is getting a little too big for this bag, so I might have to move it. I'm not sure, we'll see. All right, new starts. I have two new starts here. And this one is the Felix Cardigan, not the pullover, the Cardigan by um, Amy Christoffers. I split for sleeves and I haven't touched it since. So I just did the yoke and yeah, this pretty much just the yoke all the way up to the sleeve split. And then I was like, okay, I'm good. I got that part done. Now it's just mindless knitting forever. So I'll pick this up at some time. I'm hoping this fits. Uh, it looks like it should, especially after I block it. Yeah, this should be just fine. Um, this, this 
This project's knit on a US 10 or six millimeter needle. Um, I actually went up to a 10 and a half to get closer to gauge. I don't know if I'm hitting gauge exactly, but I definitely went up a needle size and I'm using Knit Picks. Um, what is this? Wool the Andes Tweed in the Dove Heather colorway, which is a worst of weight yarn. Um, I think it's 80% wool and 20% dongle tweed. Um, as you can see here, the tweedy bits, nice and neutral. So I had this yarn and stash forever and I've been wanting to downsize my stash and I've been really struggling. Oh, I forgot. I need to plan that video. Um, I've been really struggling with downsizing my stash. So it makes me happy when I'm actually using stash and I can, or I'm using something that I've counted towards stash in the beginning and I can actually count it out because I didn't count minis and I did not count cone. Well, I counted cones as one and cones take more than, you know, more than one project to finish a cone off. So, um, and then there's definitely my undyed yarn that I didn't count towards stash that I can't remember if I've used. There's some things that I've used this year that aren't counted towards stash. So that kind of bummed me out a little. But this is making me happy because I've used, I think this is ball number four so far. So that's, that's good. I have 10 total, so it should be enough. I made the Felix pullover using uh, Let Lopi. Yes, Let Lopi. And um, I used, I had purchased 10 little things like this and I only ended up using seven uh, or it was seven and a half or six and a half maybe so I'm hoping that's I mean well I'm, I'm hoping 10 is enough to make the cardigan it should be but who knows so that's one start and then I just decided to start something else too I was like, you know what? We're going to start these teas that I want. So I started one of them the other day and it was a real struggle. Okay. I could not hit gauge at all with the yarn that I wanted to use. So I was like, what the heck am I going to do? So I was really struggling. I, I did a gauge swatch with the call for needles and, um, I wasn't hitting gauge. I was like quite, I was, I think six stitches more than what was needed. And I was like, oh, this isn't going to work. I went up a needle size and, and this is before blocking. I went up a needle size. I got like one less stitch. So 25 stitches per four inches when I need 20. So I was like, okay, well, I blocked the first one and I got 24 stitches using a four inch needle, or not four inch needle, using a US four or 3.5 millimeter, right? Is that what it is, a 3.5 millimeter? Yes. Call for needles, a US four, 3.5 millimeter. I, when I, after I blocked that swatch, I actually was getting 24 stitches per four inches. So I was like, that's close enough. We'll just go up a size in the pattern and call it good. Um, and hope that there's still a decent amount of ease. I'm okay if it's like two, three inches of ease instead of the recommended, I think it was like four to six inches of positive ease. I'm like, we'll, we'll do with what we got. It's crazy too, because the US five, shoot, I don't know what the millimeter is on that one yet. I'm sorry. Um, it's crazy to think that that one has more stitches than the US four. It made no sense. It must have just been the time because the, you know, my tension, my stress level, it had to have been. But anyway, so I was like, okay, I'm going to just use the call for needles. I'm still going to use the yarn that I wanted to. We're just going to make it work. So I go ahead and cast on. And I realized that my needles are too long. So I transfer the cast on stitches to a shorter needle a cable and pretty much like a like a 12 inch or 11 inch, you know, I'm working with that. I did a, what was a long tail cast on? I get going into it. I transfer it to a longer, well, I transfer it to the, you know, you have to start with a smaller needle. I'm sorry, I'm just all over the place. This was a heck of a time. You start with a smaller needle for your ribbing, you know, your typical, you start with a smaller needle. 
So I did all that on that small needle, like the short needle. And then when I got to doing the regular stuff, when you switch to the main needle, um, I switched it to a longer cable and it was still too long. So I was like, crap, I gotta switch it back to a small needle, but use the big thing. And then I was starting to get worried. I'm like, is this gonna fit over my head? And I'm glad I checked because no, it wasn't gonna fit over my head. I'm like, dang it. So I ripped it all out and recast on and I ended up not even thinking and I just cast on with the main needle. And I was like, you know what? This is probably better for the, you know, in the long run to just cast on with the main needle. So that is what I did. I cast on with the main needle. I am using, I'm still using a short, let's see here. Where is this? This is an 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. It's a 14 inch all around because these needles are three inches and the cable is only eight inches. So what I need is to start with because it's so small in the beginning. I mean, it does fit over my head. I checked, so I am good there. But uh, yeah, I'm just like, man, this was a real struggle, a real struggle to start, but I'm going. This is what I have so far. So this is the, I'm not entirely sure of the, the pronunciation. I think it's, mm, you know, what? I don't even have it in front of me to, to see what it looks like. Miss Arena, Miss, Miss Serena. I'm sorry. I, I need it in front of me to be able to pronounce it, I think. Uh, it's by Caitlin Hunter, um, and I'm gonna. I'm using my Holst Garn Coast brand. This is the putty colorway, and then for the color work part, part, I have a cone of the same base, but it's in the black current colorway. It's a it's a deep dusty purple. It's really pretty. And the only reason why I wanted to cast this on was because I really want to know what it feels like to wear this yarn. I really want to buy more of it for another project. Like I want to buy another cone or several and the color card. Um, but I don't want to buy it until I know I really like this, like wearing this base. It's the base is, it's like I said, it's called coast. It is 55% lamb's wool and 45% cotton. It feels really, really nice. Unblocked and blocked. Like once I wash it, it's really soft, but it's soft before you even wash it. So I'm just like, I really want to know how this feels to wear it. So that's why I was like, I need to get something made. So I figured let's go ahead and just make this. Um, so yeah, that's why I cast this guy on. I don't know what else to tell you. Um, I don't know how well the cables are going to show up in this yarn. I've done just one so far, so you, you can't even see anything. It's lots of yarn overs going on so far so it's just it looks like a hot mess at the moment it just needs some more more done but yeah I don't know if cables are the best for this but it doesn't matter oh excuse me so that is it for the knitting content I don't have any new purchases for knitting at all I'm proud of myself there. Um, so yes, it's just a matter of getting things done. And yeah, I just need to get things done so I can work on new things. I need, I think I'm just at the point where I'm just like, nothing is entertaining me right now. That's probably why I also cast on two new projects. But at the same time, I need to get things done. So yeah, um, carrying on uh, sewing wise. I have um, a pair of pants that I made using some blue canvas that I had in my stash. I was grateful that this was plenty of fabric to make this pair of pants. So these are the Worker Trousers by the Modern Sewing Company. I think so. They're just a tapered, like, jean. And I actually made my first button fly and I even bound or you know trimmed this one you could have trimmed this side too but I was like yeah no this is already annoying and there's my pockets these are nice deep pockets like all the way down to here those are some good pockets on some women's pants so 
The only thing I am not cool with is the how the at the end of the whole pattern to make these pants, it was kind of lackluster with the these belt loops and the waistband and just how to put all that together was kind of lackluster. I was a little disappointed in the pattern for that because I felt like the rest of the pattern was pretty good at explaining um, how to do all like the fly and all the other stuff, but I felt like they had just given up at the end of the pattern. So my belt loops don't look that great. Um, I used a white thread for serging and then like the belt loop should have been cut thicker so that if you they want you to serge the edge that when you fold them over it kind of hides it more they do pop out to the front for me as you can see i'm not going to switch my serger thread so yeah i haven't worn these out at all yet um but i want to and the f i didn't even think to use like canvas before for pants so that is an option in the future Okay, and then the other sewing project really isn't like, I didn't make these. These are a pair of jeans that I purchased a while ago, like a long time ago. So I purchased these pants from Walmart uh, a year or two ago. I think it was like two years ago. And I really love these pants. It was so funny because they were advertised as mom jeans. But I really love the fit and I really love the the color of the fabric. As you can see, it's almost like this. I don't know if you'd want to call it. It's probably not acid wash, but I don't have any jeans that are this color. Ugh, I gotta get out of there. So I really love these jeans. The only issue was, is on the front they're distressed, and one section, all the like little white things broke apart. So now there's a giant hole, like a giant hole that was on my thigh. And I didn't like that. I'm almost 40 years old. I don't mind distressed jeans. It's just I hate... I just hate the fact that it was a giant hole. Like, that's too much. You're seeing too much of my skin. So, as you can see, super distressed. I really like it. I don't mind the hole being open at... This is my knee, so it's not that big of a deal. This one has been okay so far. It's this one. This is on my thigh, and all these white bits used to be across here, so it was kind of, like, enclosed. But for some reason, they all popped open. So I hated how much skin was showing, like this would all widen out. So what I did was I took this panel of knitting that I had. Oh, come on, stop focusing on me. <sighs> Sorry. This panel I took and I put it inside and I, it's even up here too, I went all the way up just to and I sewed it in. I have not tried these on since, so I'm a little worried right here. You can see there's some like rippling puckering. I'm hoping that it'll still fit over my thighs because these are form-fitting jeans, so I'm hoping it still fits, but I put that in there and then I sewed, I tried to sew up these bits to kind of go over them instead of being flopping open. But yeah, and I want to do some more like visible mending on these. Like I've seen other people do. I think it'd be really cute, but that's what I did. Um, I tried just hand sewing it at first and that was too tedious. And so I just put it on the machine and it was tedious that way too, but I just shoved it in there and I was like, you are going to work for me. So I like that. I like that a lot. I was going to just throw away this panel that I knit cause I had sewed it on as a bag, like a drawstring bag and it did not work at all so I just cut the panel off and used it for that. I made sure to zigzag stitch the the edging this edging so hopefully it will not fall apart in the wash but it is a super wash yarn as well so hopefully <laughs> everything will be okay but yeah I didn't want to get rid of these jeans I really really wanted to keep these but I was really disappointed with the hole. So that is what I did there. Um, okay, that's it for sewing. I have, I think I have officially burnt myself out. I mean, I still have pattern pieces sitting around. Um, I plan to make a pair of shorts 
using the worker trouser pants uh, pattern, the worker trouser pattern, um, using that floral fabric that I showed last week, it ended up being too small for the apron that I wanted to make. So I think there's enough there to make a pair of shorts. I'm just worried since the print is so big, will I lose a lot of that making shorts? Probably, but I think I'm still going to try. So I have that. Um, I still have a stack of fabric. I just like I said, I think I did burn myself out. I haven't really wanted to make anything. I mean, I do want to make. It's just the motivation is not necessarily there. I do have another pattern that I recently just printed out that I want to uh, make it's a dress, the metamorphic dress by So Liberated. I really like that. Um, it's like a reversible dress that's sleeveless. And so a lot of people have worn it over pants or they have um, like a long sleeve shirt underneath it or they put a like a knit sweater over it. Again, it's a reversible dress. So I'm just like, yeah, I think I, I think I want that in my wardrobe. So that is something that needs to be made soon. I just got to figure out exactly what kind of fabric I want to use, what colors, that kind of stuff. Um, and then, yeah, so that's it for sewing. Um, that is it for sewing right now. Um, and then the, the new craft that I just had to try the other evening, the other day, I just had to, I don't know why. So I got it in my mind. I'm like, well, you know, I've, I see people, occasionally this comes up on my Instagram where people are bead weaving like earrings and there's been a few really, really cute ones. And I'm like, I wonder how difficult that would be. You know, I'd really like to try that. And so I was like, I wonder if they sell kits. And so I went on Etsy and I looked and I'm like, oh, they do. And they got some really nice ones, but they're kind of, I wouldn't say they're expensive, but definitely a little bit up there. So I was like, mm, maybe I can just find a tutorial and make a simple pair using beads that I have from my cross stitching stash. So I did that. I found, I found an excellent, I actually found two really good videos on how to do this. The first one I found, there's no talking or whatever. And that one actually was like the best one that I found for me. She was really, you know, just showing you how to do it up close, super easy. I found that easy like great and then the second one was a she more you know verbal explaining kind of explained a little too much but and it wasn't as close up so it made it a little difficult but it I mean there was some extra stuff in that video that the first video didn't show so that was really nice to know so I just kind of used the two videos together and made a pair of earrings. So these don't have any fasteners yet on them because I've just been too lazy for it. But um, yeah, I made some, they're called brick stitch fringe earrings. I think that's what you would look up if you want to make your own. I use seed beads um, to make them and some string and a bunch of weaving, super easy. So my first one, let's see if I can get this to focus. Oh, come on. Okay, my first, oh, it did focus for a second. My first one, it's not that great. It is a bit loose in areas, especially up in this area. Oops, sorry. Um, And it took me probably two hours to make this one. I was like, okay, is this how long it's going to take to make earrings like this? Because if so, it's not something I'm gonna wanna do. Um. You know, it's a little tough. I was tired, but yeah, so I just need to put fasteners on them. They're really pretty. These are just some Mill Hill beads that I had in stash. And I just paired them together and made these. So I just did one the first night. And then the next night I was like, okay, well, I need to make the second one. So let's go ahead and do it. I remembered everything. So I didn't have to refer back to the videos at all. So I was grateful for that. So that meant that those videos were really good if I was able to recall every single step. So I made the second one and it took less time. Oh, come on, focus. Less time and everything is much tighter. Oh, come on. I'm really happy with the second one. Uh, I did a lot better this time. 
um, this middle color, I don't know if you can see it really well. It's like this rose gold color. I was so scared I was going to run out before finishing. I ended up having four beads left. I was so grateful to be able to finish a second one. So yeah, um, this might be a small side hobby <laughs> in the future. When I was looking for kits, I came across some Etsy sellers who actually sell just patterns. And I saw some of the cutest patterns and I'm like yeah I think I need to make some so I saw some with some mushrooms and um you know like it's like this shape except it's straight across instead of this fringe like well I mean it's fringed but it's straight across like instead of this what do you want to call it this tapered look um but the design on this would be like mushrooms or plants or just different different designs, different, I don't know, it was really pretty. So I was just like, oh, I need to get some of those patterns. But the only thing is, is I don't have that many beads in my stash. So I would have to purchase beads. So I haven't purchased anything yet. I've been good there, but I have been on like Amazon and Etsy and I found this one bead company that I can't remember the name of now, but they sell like little uh, kits and stuff like that too. So I was like, ooh, I don't need another hobby, but I've started wearing more earrings recently. Um, so why not make some really pretty ones? <laughs> These are really pretty. I really, really like these. Again, I just need to put fasteners on them. So yeah, that is what I've been up to. Okay, so I've already been talking for 40 minutes and I still have life stuff. So if you're not interested in the life stuff, um, I appreciate you stopping by. You can go ahead and go about your day. There's plenty of other people to watch. So I know how that is. Um, if you are interested in what happened this last weekend, um, stick around. All right, so I'm going to be inserting a lot of photos. So I think I'm going to scooch over this way. I'm going to insert a lot of photos um, that I have um, because this last weekend was my 10th anniversary. And I was really, really, um, and I had, well, okay. It was the 10th anniversary and I had planned for me and my husband to take some updated photos. So when we got married back in 2013, um, phones weren't as good as they were today so the photos were actually really really bad we got married in a courthouse i'm not the kind of person who wants to have a big ceremony or a party i do not like being the center of attention um at all so i did not want to be the main focus <laughs> um i just did not want that plus we didn't have a lot of friends back then um uh, my husband and i i mean we had friends but just not a lot of them so i was like Let's not spend the money on something like this. Let's just go to the courthouse. So um, that's what we did. Uh, it was me and my husband, um, his dad, Olivia, at six months old. And I had two friends back then. I mean, they're still my friends. I just haven't seen them in years. But And they were there too. And we just got married in the court. I wore a dress I found at JCPenney's, which, you know, it's so funny. It's the other day I pulled it out of the closet and I cannot fit into it anymore. Thank you, kids <laughs> and life. But I didn't expect to be able to fit into it. But yeah, just a JCPenney's dress. Um, I had a really short haircut. You know, these are the pictures, as you're seeing. Uh, very grainy and blurry. I mean, a couple are okay, but... They are not what I would, I don't, I don't have any of them on the wall. Mm -mm, nope. So I was like, I need new photos. 10 years. This is a big deal to me. Um, being married for 10 years. That's, you know, coming from uh, a divorced family, um, multiple divorced family. I've been divorced twice myself. This was a big deal. This was a huge deal for me. So we had planned to go out on Saturday, the day before the, our anniversary to go take pictures, but it rained all day long. So we ended up just having a lazy day. I was like, okay, well, we'll try again on Sunday, which was the day of our anniversary. I'm like, okay, 
I wake up to the same thing. I was absolutely devastated. I tried not to let it bother me, but it, it really did. I really wanted those photos for our anniversary. Um, so uh, about halfway through the day, I was like, can we just try to have some kind of photos? And so my husband's like, yeah, let's, let's get ready. So, you know, we got ready, we got the kids ready and we decided we were going to drive up into the mountains um, and go to this place called Farish Recreation Area. It's like a campground that's run by the U.S. Air Force. So if you have a military ID, you're allowed to access this area. And my husband's been up there one time before for a church camping trip. And he said that there's some pretty good spots up there. So that's what we did. We got dressed. We drove up there. It was, it rained here and there the drive up. So I was like, okay, well, hopefully we'll be okay. We get up there and they won't let us on the property. Um, even though I'm a veteran, um, I didn't have the the proper identification so that was unfortunate so we're up there and you know it's like in the middle of the woods it's dirt roads everywhere so we my husband's like well do you want to just turn that way and see what's that way um because we've had we had friends get married up in that area we just couldn't remember where it was just in the middle of a field up in that area and it had a beautiful view but I was a little bit worried with the overcastness that you weren't going to be able to see much. So I was like, well, let's let's go ahead and see. And we're driving a little bit more. And then all of a sudden we see a sign for Rampart Reservoir. And I'm like, oh, that's right. There's a reservoir up here that people talk about. I'd never been up there before, though. So we, we drive up and there's a person at the gate. And they're like, yeah, it's 10 bucks if you want to go to the reservoir. And I'm like, okay, I suppose. So we pay the 10 bucks and uh, drive over. And then there's a person at another gate and he's like, okay, so, you know, we explain our situation. We just want to take pictures, you know, this is all we want to do. And he's like, okay, well, you can't stop on the dam because we didn't know there was dam there, but you're like, you can't stop on the dam, but you drive all the way through and then there's a parking, you can stop and you can go, there's hiking, there's the, the lake. Um, and then he gave us some other like recommendations for areas around the lake that would have decent views um, for photos. So I was like, I was grateful for that. So we go across the, the dam, which was pretty cool. And, uh, we find our first spot to take photos. So we did that. Um, even with it being overcast, at least we still had somewhat of a view. Um, that's all I cared about was trees and mountains. <laughs> um, it did suck a little bit because a lot of what we did see happened to be the burn scar from, 2012 um, we had a really bad fire up in that area that we were at um, and a lot of the trees are still looking the same even from back then so that was a little bit sucky there's not as much green as I would have preferred but it was still beautiful like the trees weren't full but it still worked so we took those photos and then we drove around a little bit more around the area found a few other spots took some more photos there um, and then, uh, you know, the kids, the kids were having a great time. They really enjoy, um, being able to throw sticks and rocks into the water and they wanted to keep hiking, but I'm just like, I'm in a dress. My husband's in his suit or at least, you know, dressed up nicely. He's got nice dress shoes on. We cannot be going hiking. We'll try again some other time. I think maybe during Father's Day we're gonna go back up into that area. I'm not entirely sure, but if we can. Oh, excuse me. That'll be nice because then the kids can actually enjoy it a little bit more. Um, so we did that and then we left the reservoir and we went up to one of the picnic areas that was recommended by the gate guard and that's where I saw the, um, the I think my favorite photos were taken in this spot. <coughs> It was this, um, you just stop on the side of the road and you can tell that there's like a picnic area, but it's like in the woods and then there's these giant rocks everywhere. Like, like Troy's like, no, they're boulders, mom, because they're so big. And I'm like, yes, they're boulders, but huge. And so we kind of climb up around in there and I see this one rock and I'm like, it kind of looked like it was overhanging. And I'm like, ooh, this is, this is nice. This is really nice. So I go up on it and I'm like, yeah, this will work. 
So we take a couple pictures up there and this rock, at the end of this rock is a drop off. There's nothing there. So it was like really, really lovely. So we, we hang out and then I think, I think that was it for the photos really. Like I was like, okay, I think I'm good. I think I got everything I need. Um, I do wish I would have gotten a few more like up close photos. I had assumed that I could have just zoomed in on the photos that I did take, but when I got home and started editing, I realized that I had zoomed out to take a lot of those photos because I really wanted the the um, landscape as well. And if you zoom out, there's no really zooming in. Uh, it's really grainy and stuff like that. So I'm just like, okay, well, these are what I have and it's okay. I do still like a lot of these. So anyways, we get back in the car and we're leaving the area and it was like, you get to a T and you're like, either you go back this way and we come back the way we came or we go this way and see what the heck's over this way. And we decided to be adventurous and see what was that way. So we start driving and my husband's like, um, where does this road take us? So I pull up the map and we don't have any service up there. It's like in the middle of nowhere. There's no service on our phones. Um, the map, like Apple Maps comes up and I'm like looking at the road that we're on and I'm trying to follow it. And I'm like, it looks like it takes us back to town. I'm like, I'm just not entirely sure. It's either town or it takes us to the Air Force Base. One or the other. And he's like, well, I need to know so we don't keep driving. And I'm like, Hun, I don't have any, I don't have any service. So I can't tell you. So we drive a little bit further, um, a little bit further, and eventually he gets just enough to put in the GPS. And the GPS says that, yes, it will take us home from where we were. And it would take like two hours. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, two hours. Um, but he's like, yeah, we can keep going this way. I'm like, all right, let's just keep going. It's a dirt road on the mountain. Um, I didn't think twice of it. So we're driving along, and all of a sudden we come to like this out like a, a lookout point and we're like "Ooh, look at that you can see the whole city of Colorado Springs like the whole city it was amazing so we stop we get out take a couple more photos um kind of just you know willy-nilly photos and then a f yeah just take a look why not enjoy it and then we get back in the car and keep going and we keep going and then there's another lookout spot and this one is like it has a better view it was super pretty. So we get out and we take a couple more photos. Um, we get a really good family photo. Um, I don't know if I didn't get, I don't think I got a picture of the cloud. Like, so it was overcast, but then there was like another cloud that was like in between the mountain because in between the mountain is the pass. Um, and there was a like this one little lone cloud just kind of going down by itself. And it was really, really pretty. And I really liked it. And you could just see all sorts of stuff. It was super cool. My daughter decided she wanted to sit on the broken part of the little like, there's like a, a bar type fence to keep you from falling off this thing. I don't think it's as big as a cliff as my mind is trying to tell me it was. But in my mind, it was a sheer drop off after that. And she's like sitting on it. And I freaked out on her. And I'm like, Nope, I had the worst time sleeping that night. All I could dream about was cliffs and zombies and my daughter falling off. And I was just like, yeah, this is not, not anything for me. So after that little bit, we get back in the car and we're like, okay, it's going to take forever to get home. It's already pretty late in the afternoon. Let's, let's get going. So after that, my life was very much like I'm going to die today. Um, after that last lookout, the road, I don't even know what you want to call it. It was a mountain road. It had nothing on the side, nothing but a drop off down the mountain. And I was just like, and nothing but a bunch of switchbacks. And I was absolutely terrified. I was so scared that I couldn't even look at the views. I couldn't do it. I couldn't look outside. I was like this the whole time driving, like... My husband is just giggling the whole time. He's like, what do you want me to do? And I'm like, I want you to drive in the middle of this road because it was a dirt road. Again, it had rained the day prior and earlier that morning. So it was wet. I was so scared it was going to break away if we got too close to the edge. 
I was also too afraid that the rocks on this side were going to slip off and knock us off the I was just so upset <laughs> I was so scared and um my husband's just giggling and he's like, I can't drive in the middle of the road because if somebody comes around the, the next switchback, I'm not going to be able to see him. I'm going to swerve and we're going to go off. I was like, well, uh, and we did, we did come across other cars where my husband had to move over closer to the edge and I was so scared and my son is in the back giggling too and my husband just thinks it's hilarious and I was just like petrified and oh, at least my daughter was able to not pick up on my <laughs> on my anxiety of it all but I was just like I was I was over it it took an hour plus because by the time we got down the mountain there was still another good 45 minutes to get home so it was probably an hour's worth of just absolute stress of driving down this mountain and I was just like oh my gosh I'm like never again do I want to drive on this road Never again. If somebody suggests we take this road, I'm going to tell them that they can kick rocks because no. I was just like, and so I'm just like, yeah, I guess I'm never driving up to Pike's Peak if the roads, he's like, but they're paved. I'm like, but there's still drop offs. I don't know. It was, it was hilarious, but I was absolutely terrified at the same time. So I did miss a lot of beautiful views, unfortunately, but we got down the mountain safely. And then we went home, changed real quick, and then we went out to dinner. Um, and that was it for the rest of the day. I mean, I came home, I edited the photos, I ordered some prints. So hopefully they'll be here soon. But uh, yeah, it was an adventure, <laughs> to say the least. Um, but I think I think it turned out well. I did. I do think it turned out well, so... Yeah, um, I wish I could have gotten some snap, uh, some photos of the, the the road that we were on, but again, I couldn't. I couldn't look. Like I'd peek up just to see if like it was safe for a minute, and then I would immediately, like I was physically turning towards my husband and like ducking my head down in between our seats. That's the most that I you know I could just hide. I had to hide. I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't deal with it. So, all right. So that is the story of this, of everything. So um, I'm going to go ahead and let you go. And I hope you have a wonderful week. And I will see you next time. Bye.